All right, we've got all four posts up. We've got them all tied so that they can't move either way. And we've got a couple of stiffeners across the top so that we can keep everything where it needs to be. So they're putting posts in. These posts are on 24 inch centers. We could go as wide as probably three feet. Um, it just happens to be that we're running at two foot because we're using four foot sheet metal. I could use five foot sheet metal and go at 30 inches and that would be fine. But it just worked out a little better to, it being that this body is 22 foot to run on two foot centers with the post. So um, we don't have any oddball gaps that way. So yeah, we've got everything marked out where the posts are gonna be on the bottom rail and on the top rail. So we'll get all the posts in and then we can start sand, standing the sheets up. We'll come down each side and then start standing them up. So Jared's been working on this 8110. He's got it all washed up and he has removed all of the hydraulic lines that go over the top of the transmission any little line that we would have problems with that would just be easier to replace now are getting replaced before the cab goes on so that is the story behind what is going on with this so jason he's working on some more scrapers putting skid plate panels on the bottom of the trucks and now he is working on pulling the rubber off of the arms itself now these um, arms you can buy them from James way or what is it? it's not James way anymore it's that orange Val metal yeah Val metal you can buy them with this plastic edge or you can buy them with the metal or you can do what we're doing and get the rubber from gable belting and use that the rubber seems to be a little friendlier on the concrete and the rubber we're on mostly rubber anywho how but back when we didn't have rubber on the floor rubber on the edge was just a little less forgiving the plastic isn't worth the crap. It wears out too fast. And with the, we're bedding with sand and it's just real abrasive on everything. And we have found the rubber just lasts longer. So what this is, is conveyor belting. Believe it or not, it's a inch to an inch and an eighth thick, depending on when we ordered it. No, you're actually out of it right now and they're gonna drop off some rubber that is an inch and an eighth uh, thick. So what do you got? You got three inches? I still got three inches. Even at the other end? Right on. Really? So I need to be sure. That'll that work. I better get next door and get some posts set with these guys. Well, they've got the posts up on this right hand side. I've got one piece of sheet metal ripped because these are four footers. So we started with a two foot piece and then we'll be fours all the way up through to the front every once in a while they have to jack that top rail up just a little bit to get the post to go in there and of course these harbor freight jacks aren't that great eh, it's going up Got it. up a little more almost in there there it is all right why don't you let it down 
Yeah, let it down. That's good right there. All right. So we tackle out the top first and then get the bottom squared up and then they move on to the next one. Now we end up using a quarter inch wide uh, unit for the post for the tailgate because we run the tailgate cylinder from there. So all this racket with the hammer, got this guy with a sludge hammer trying to straighten out some brackets. Yeah. All righty. Well, we'll join up with you in a little while once they get the rest of them posts up and then we can start slapping sheets up. What we want to do is put the sheets up on both sides and then push one side against the other, then run down through here and tack weld the sheets to the posts. We want to move from one end uh, to the other. So that'll give you an idea of what this looks like so far. Well, we've got the sheet metal setting in place on this right hand side. We've got just a couple of posts left put in on this left hand side. Then we can go down through and put the sheet metal up on this side and then push both sides against each other to tack weld the sheets down to the posts. Andrew set up this fuel tank the other day and he didn't have all these little alligator clips here to hook onto a battery terminal. We're not hot wiring this one because this one is going to go from one truck or whatever to another. Uh, Jared wanted to have something that he could load in the back of his unit quick, take fuel to the crawler. We might throw this in one of the other pickups so that the chisel plow tractors have enough fuel. And uh, we're going to use it accordingly. So instead of having it hot wired to whatever, we're just going to hook up some little alligator clips to hook onto a battery with. So he's got to get his wires stripped down, get those connected, and then this tank will be done. So we've got a plate on the floor here and Sarah thought it'd be a wise idea if we made my tombstone up right now. Right, Sarah? <laughs> uh, it, this is a piece of three-quarter plate that I wanted to make some tail hinge material out of. And it was a drop that I got from Alro. So it's just how it came so it kind of looks like a tombstone <laughs> yeah all right you need a hand with that one yeah i better put the camera down give you guys a hand well we've got the sheet metal all up and now we are starting to Tack the metal to the post. Andrew's trying out the saw for the first time. The girls have been able to use it. But he is not. He needs to go a little faster. That'll walk right through that metal. But uh, what we'll have to do, once he gets that one other post cut, is uh, work two at a time. Uh, Alex is going from one side to the other, getting the tacks done so that we can take these this down and then move it back to uh, the next post. Then once we get all the sheet metal tacked into place, then they can go in and start doing the welding. And what we're gonna do and what we do is end up welding continuous all the way down through these seams. It's a lot of welding. It's a lot of weld, but it really doesn't take all that long because you're just doing a fast weld. And the beauty with doing it this way is you don't have a 90 degree corner 
like we have right here if we had uh, rectangular tubing here you've got this 90 degree corner and it's hard actually to wash this area from here to here because you really can't get a brush in there uh, that well now this is 3 16 tube so it's got a steeper radius to it or a more rounded radius I should say if we were to use inch and a half by three which I've used inch and a half by three for uprights before it doesn't have as much of a radius therefore it creates a tighter fit up to the side but we have been doing them this way now for I don't know 14 or 15 years I think so we um i think the first one i did like this was back in either 06 or 08 with the formed metal uh post you ready to move back there yeah. all righty yeehaw all right we have all of the sheet metal tack welded to all of the posts now what we can do is we can go through, oh, wait a minute here, wait a minute, wait a minute. All right, we have all of the sheet metal tack welded to the posts. We started at the front of the body and we worked our way from the front to the back. We used these load binder uh, jacks to push out against the side so that we could get the sheet metal up tight next to the sides of the body uh, we had a viewer drop off a bunch of these we've used a couple of those and then of course I had four uh, that I've used for years now we're gonna be able to get those sticks out of there and then we can go through and put longer welds uh, down through the sides we're just going to jump around so that we don't warp anything once we get all the welding done on the sides and we can put the skirts on i'm going to work on doing the cab shield while these guys are welding uh the sides here so what we're going to do with the cab shield we're roughly five feet long on it we're going to bring that down to about i think it was 26 inches um to where the cab's going to be about right here so um we're going to have that area that we can fill as well and then of course we're going to taper it a little bit so water doesn't sit up in there i usually put about a three inch taper on that so we've got everything kind of still tied together here and then we can kind of take them ties off as we get more and more uh, welds down through uh, the sides of the box here we actually have yeah so we'll join up with you once we get a little more done right Sarah you ready to just go into doing welding yeah, all righty. I figured we would come down here and check on Jared, see how he's doing with the crawler. This is the first that we've actually used the crawler this spring here. He's stirring up the manure in the lagoon. Nate has done some work on this crawler here a little while ago, a week or so ago. He had some leaks and uh, tubing on it. Looks to be running pretty good. We've got a little bit of ice on the surface. He's just running back and forth he's gonna get across it quick here and then he's gonna go to hauling uh, manure it's a 
little cold out here this morning. The ground's a little stiff, but it's starting to dry out. So Andrew got this fuel pump going the other night. And then uh, Jared put this tank in the back of his truck here, his little truck. He uses this to uh, fill that crawler with fuel. He's just sitting in it, running the controls. Back and forth. Well, I'm gonna get back up to the shop. And we're going to uh, start closing in that silage box here now. We're gonna put the front cap shield on, so. We better get back up to the shop. Well, this is where we're going to close out from this video. We've got all our sheets up, so we're starting to weld them in the place. In the next video, we're going to close the front part of the box, and we'll get our front plate on, and then we'll start closing in the uh, cab shield. Sarah's going right to town on this side here. Doing quite a bit of welding when you get your regulator to cross up like that. You're running a pretty good amount of gas through it. So that's where we're going to sign off here. I want to thank everybody for watching. And we will catch you at the next video.